the stop method. Another important thing that psychology teaches us is the stop method. STOP is an acronym for STOP, TAKE A STEP BACK, OBSERVE, AND PROCEED. This method may seem incredibly basic, and it is, with good reason. Begin by stopping what you're doing whenever you're faced with an obstacle. Stopping gives you the opportunity to take a step back and observe your own emotions. Your emotions need to be recognized in any obstacle to give you a bit of guidance about yourself and the situation. Once you observe yourself, you can proceed mindfully. Mindful continuation means that you continue to touch back on your emotions and reflect on the process. This gives you the opportunity to continue to develop yourself throughout the entire obstacle. During the STOP method, it is helpful to think about what advice you would give someone else if they were in your shoes. As humans, we're often much more critical and pessimistic of ourselves. Three ways to determine which obstacles are worth your time. Obstacles are a great way to challenge yourself and grow as a person. Even though they can be stressful at times, obstacles really are essential for growing and thriving as a human being. Still, not all obstacles are worth our time. For example, some are literally impossible to overcome, while others simply aren't worth it. How do you determine which obstacles are worth your time, though? After all, some obstacles are absolutely necessary, but others are downright destructive. In this tutorial, I'm going to answer just that. Let's take a look at three ways to determine which obstacles are worth your time. 1. Look at the facts. Whenever an obstacle comes your way, the first thing you should do is look at the facts. This will quickly tell you whether an obstacle is worth your time. The facts include any relevant information that is true and not related to your emotions. For example, legal implications, requirements, or hard statistics all include facts of the obstacle. Take for instance that the obstacle in front of you is getting your degree. The facts related to this obstacle include financial requirements, class requirements, etc. Consider all of these facts to determine whether or not getting your degree is worth it. In the instance of your degree, the obstacle will likely be worth it. There are instances when you will find that not to be the case though. For example, joining a cult may not be worth it if it involves giving up your financial independence. 2. Consider your emotions. In addition to the facts, consider your emotions. Though you need to keep your emotions and the facts separate, you certainly shouldn't ignore it either. Your emotions play a heavy role in your life. Ignoring them will likely cause you to make the wrong decision or pursue an obstacle that's not worth it. For example, let's say that your partner has taken a job across the country. Your options are to move with them, break up, or stay in a long distance relationship. In this obstacle, it's important to evaluate how you feel about every option. For many people, moving or being in a long-distance relationship is not emotionally worth it. Even if the facts allow either option to play out, your emotions may tell you that it's time to break up. Listen to your emotions to see if things are emotionally worth your time. 3. Look for alternatives. Finally, the third way to determine if an obstacle is worth it is to look for alternatives. In other words, is there a simpler solution than the one you're pursuing? If so, definitely go with a simpler solution if it accomplishes the same task. For example, let's say you want to have a higher income. You come to the conclusion that the only way to get a higher income is to get a better job, but you don't have any degree or experience. Like most people, you assume you need to get a college degree, but you actually aren't interested in going to college in and of itself. The obstacle may seem surmountable. Instead, you should probably look at trade school because it accomplishes the same task, but it isn't as demanding as a four-year degree. Conclusion Once again, you shouldn't shy away from obstacles simply because they scare you. Still. There are instances when you should choose to let go of an obstacle if it is impossible to achieve or emotionally taxing. Considering the facts, your emotions, 
and alternative solutions is the best way to determine if an obstacle is worth your time. Don't be afraid to let go if the obstacle isn't worth it. Four ways to teach your children how to overcome obstacles. As parents, it is our job to help our children learn needed skills to become functioning adults. One of the most important aspects of being a functioning adult is knowing how to overcome obstacles. Unfortunately, many parents do not know how to teach this lesson to their children. If you want to learn about different techniques for teaching your child how to overcome obstacles, keep listening. This tutorial goes over four different ways to teach overcoming obstacles to a child. Let's get started. One, play games. Children don't like being lectured or feeling like they're in a classroom. Teach your child to overcome obstacles by turning it into a game. Something like a board game, word puzzle, or scavenger hunt will teach your child crucial problem-solving skills without it feeling like they're learning anything. As you're playing these games with your child, reinforce the ideas of perseverance and not giving up. Continue to challenge them to get better in a way that is not intimidating or harmful. And be sure to not add too much pressure from the game. Two, help them. Many parents assume that their children do not go through their own hardships and trials. That is not true. Even though the obstacles may seem small to an adult, they feel heavy to your child. One of the best ways to teach them how to overcome obstacles is to help them whenever the obstacles come along. Children are often very keen to tell their parents whenever they're facing a problem or obstacle. Instead of either ignoring the issue or solving it for them, help your child. This makes them feel like they can trust you, all while teaching them healthy and helpful techniques for figuring out their own way out of problems. Three, talk about problems. The dinner table is one of the best places to create a bond with your children and teach them how to overcome obstacles. Too many parents make the mistake of not giving their child the opportunity to problem solve with them. Instead of simply complaining about your own problems in front of your child, ask them their opinion. Of course, you shouldn't be asking them about serious problems that could affect their life, such as your divorce. But small problems can make them feel important and help them start learning key problem-solving techniques from a young age. For example, say that you're invited to two different events that take place at the same time, and you're trying to figure out how you should best go about it. This would be a perfect opportunity to ask your child what they think you ought to do. Respond to their idea in an uplifting and inspiring way, even if it isn't the best idea. It will make them feel important and motivate them to continue problem solving. Four, show, don't tell. Monkey see, monkey do. Teach your child how to overcome obstacles by overcoming them yourself. Even if you're not aware of it, your child is watching you. Show them with your actions how to overcome obstacles. In other words, be open and honest with your child. Don't pretend that everything is perfect because that tells them that they are failing whenever they struggle with an obstacle. Likewise, don't ignore your problems. Instead, face them head on. Conclusion. Learning how to face obstacles is one of the most important lessons you can teach your child. Incorporate the four techniques above to help them learn how to problem solve their way out of obstacles. What psychology says about obstacles? Believe it or not, most obstacles are in our heads. As a result, looking at psychology can help us learn how to overcome obstacles and live a better life. In this tutorial, I'm going to tell you the three biggest things that psychology says about obstacles. Let's get to it. Mindset matters. The most important thing that psychology teaches us about obstacles is that mindset matters. Countless of studies have shown that a person's mindset or perspective will make all the difference. Having a defeatist or fixed mindset is a recipe for disaster, while having an optimistic and growth mindset will help you overcome any obstacle that comes your way. 
The worst mindset that you can have when it comes to obstacles is viewing the world as against you or viewing yourself as a failure. Both of these mindsets are guaranteed to set you up for failure. This often incites a never-ending cycle of pessimistic mindsets. In contrast, one of the best mindsets to have is a growth mindset. A growth mindset helps you view any weakness or challenge as an opportunity to grow. You don't get fixated on the negative. Instead, you know that you have the ability to get better, eventually helping you overcome the obstacle. The Stop Method Another important thing that psychology teaches us is the STOP method. STOP is an acronym for STOP, take a step back, observe, and proceed. This method may seem incredibly basic, and it is, with good reason. Begin by stopping what you're doing whenever you're faced with an obstacle. Stopping gives you the opportunity to take a step back and observe your own emotions. Your emotions need to be recognized in any obstacle to give you a bit of guidance about yourself and the situation. Once you observe yourself, you can proceed mindfully. Mindful continuation means that you continue to touch back on your emotions and reflect on the process. This gives you the opportunity to continue to develop yourself throughout the entire obstacle. During the stop method, it is helpful to think about what advice you would give someone else if they were in your shoes. As humans, we're often much more critical and pessimistic of ourselves. By thinking about what advice you would give someone else, you take a much more unbiased perspective on your own situation. We can become more resilient. Finally, the third thing that I'm going to talk about that psychology teaches us is that we can become more resilient. What does this mean? Well, the fact that we can become more resilient tells us that we can become more capable at overcoming obstacles. The more obstacles we face, the better we will be at facing them. That's because we learn crucial facts about ourselves, the reality of the world, and overcoming obstacles with every challenge that faces us. As a result, we continue to grow so that we become better and better obstacle beaters. At this point, this fact of psychology should be ringing a bell. Doesn't it sound like what the growth mindset teaches us? It does. The fact that we can become more resilient shows exactly how the growth mindset works in life. So have a growth mindset because it is realistic to our psychology. We can become more resilient as time goes on. Final thoughts. All in all, psychology teaches us that we really shouldn't be that scared of obstacles. Instead, psychology shows us that mindset matters, the STOP method works, and we can become more resilient. Together, these three teachings can help us overcome any challenge that comes our way. 5 Powerful Mindsets for Overcoming Obstacles Obstacles can be incredibly challenging, but they are unavoidable and necessary for full growth. The best way to overcome any obstacle is to change your mindset. Changing your mindset allows you to view the obstacle as an opportunity for growth, as well as brainstorm solutions to the obstacle. In this tutorial, I'm going to tell you five powerful mindsets to overcome obstacles. Let's get started. One, focus on the positive. Even if you feel pessimistic and overwhelmed by the obstacle, it is important to keep a positive mindset. A positive mindset will help you overcome any challenge because it keeps you focused and eager in the process. Focus on any positive, even if there is only one. To help you stay positive, consider having a mantra every morning to keep you motivated and enthusiastic. For example, saying something like, all obstacles are opportunities for growth helps you focus on the positive in order to overcome all obstacles. 2. Imagination and Innovation As children, we were encouraged to be creative, imaginative, and innovative. The older we get, however, the more these attributes are seen in a negative light. Despite this common perspective on creativity, imagination and innovation are what allow us to overcome any obstacle. Instead of getting stuck in a one-track mindset, 
Build imagination and innovation into the foundation of all your thinking. You may want to think of this like designing your life. A design is something that gives you guidance, but it isn't set in stone yet. Keep imagination and innovation at the center of all your daily thinking. You'll likely notice that you're more capable of overcoming your obstacles, as well as enjoying your life. 3. Self-Compassion In Western culture, it is common for us to think of compassion in terms of others. This means that we incorporate compassion into our mindset whenever we are interacting with other people or groups. The same should happen with ourselves. All mindsets should have a factor of self-compassion. Self-compassion allows you to be understanding and kind to yourself. Without a self-compassionate mindset, you are likely to become overwhelmed and distraught whenever an obstacle comes your way. By being self-compassionate, you know that you are only human and give yourself room to fail on occasion. 4. Drop out of the competition Many people go about viewing their life as a competition with their family, friends, co-workers, or strangers. The best way to overcome obstacles is by dropping out of the competition entirely. Instead of having a mindset of competition, change your mindset to that of a journey. Dropping out of the competition takes away a ton of unnecessary stress. When you take away the stress, you're able to think more clearly and take steps that actually satisfy your internal needs and wants. Change your mindset to that of a journey to help overcome obstacles. 5. Progress Tracking The fifth mindset to help you overcome obstacles is one of progress tracking. Whenever you want to lose weight, learn a new skill or anything else, you often track your progress. The same should happen when you're facing an obstacle. A progress tracking mentality helps you see whenever you are succeeding. This, in part, will boost your eagerness and optimism about your obstacle. It also gives you notice about areas that are failing, giving you an opportunity to improve. As you're progress tracking, keep in mind to not be too self-critical. Conclusion Mindsets are crucial for overcoming obstacles. Incorporate any of the previous five mindsets into your life to help overcome any obstacles that might come your way. How your mindset affects your success. To be successful, you have to be at the top of your class, have the prettiest face, or have the most amount of resources, right? wrong. Skills and hard work obviously affect your ability to success, but mindset may be one of the biggest determiners for success. Today I'm going to tell you about how your mindset affects your success. Even with the right skills, you're nothing without a good mindset. Keep listening to find out what I mean. Mindsets and Success more and more studies are being done between the relationship between one's mindset and their success. Obviously, mindsets won't immediately make you rich or help you land the job you want, but they are large determiners for your happiness level and your ability to come out on top. Everyone from Forbes to the Harvard Business Review have been talking about mindsets for this very reason. Doctors who study depression, CEOs and teachers alike all know that mindset affect your life and your ability to succeed. The best mindset for success. There are a lot of mindsets that lead to success, but the best is the growth mindset. The growth mindset tells you that you have the ability to develop your talents and skills. In other words, you aren't fixated on your weakness. Instead, you view them as opportunities to grow. The growth mindset has actually been studied quite a bit. Students who have a growth mindset are way more likely to succeed in the classroom, even if they aren't naturally as smart as some of their peers. Students with a fixed mindset, which is the opposite of a growth mindset, tend to be discouraged and give up, even if they are highly intelligent. The growth mindset really allows you to focus on yourself without comparison to others. As you do this, you get to turn yourself into the best version possible. 
allowing you to become successful over time. It will take a lot of effort and work as well, but the results will be worth it. Using the growth mindset to overcome obstacles. Knowing about the growth mindset is meaningless if you don't know how to apply it to your life. So it is important to know how to use a growth mindset to overcome obstacles. To put it bluntly, a growth mindset simply means that you view your weaknesses and obstacles as an opportunity for growth. Take for instance that you want a promotion at work, but there are a lot of other great competitors that equally deserve it. Instead of giving up and accepting defeat, a growth mindset tells you that this is an opportunity to develop yourself as a person and worker. As a result, your actions should be geared towards finding your weaknesses and turning them into strengths. As you continue to do this in the workplace, your coworkers and boss will notice the difference. Although the promotion isn't guaranteed, you'll be more likely to get it this year or next simply because you've put in so much work to improve yourself for the betterment of the office. Your career isn't the only place that will benefit from a growth mindset. School, family, relationships, and anything else you could face in life will be benefited from a growth mindset. Final thoughts. Once again, mindsets will largely determine your ability to come out on top. The growth mindset is easily one of the best mindsets to focus on throughout your life or whenever you face obstacles. The growth mindset will allow you to become the best version of yourself, making it easier to face your obstacles head on. Are obstacles really a bad thing? Whenever most people think of obstacles, they think of challenges that they want to avoid. This perspective on obstacles tends to view them largely in a negative light. After all, obstacles can take a hit to your mental health, financial stability, relationships, and a number of other aspects of your life. But are obstacles really a bad thing? In this tutorial, I'm going to answer that very question. In short, obstacles are challenging, but they're not really bad because they teach you about yourself, help you grow, and strengthen relationships. Let's dive right into this tutorial. Are obstacles really a bad thing? No. As we've already mentioned, obstacles can really take a toll on your life. Whether the obstacle be getting a promotion at work or a severe diagnosis by your doctor, obstacles may feel overwhelming and entirely negative. Although obstacles certainly are challenging, it is important that they aren't viewed like a wholly bad thing. If you only view obstacles in a negative light, you could be robbing yourself of growth opportunities and hindering your ability to overcome the obstacles. That's not to say the obstacles are not challenging and devastating at the time. On the contrary, obstacles can be incredibly overwhelming and feel like a negative aspect in your life. It's just important to remember that there are positives, as well as negatives, to every obstacle you face. They teach you about yourself. One of the biggest benefits of obstacles is that they teach you about yourself. Every time you face a new obstacle, you better learn how to interact with others and the world. You also learn about your limits, strengths, and ability to function. Though knowing yourself better may not seem like a super important benefit, it is actually critical to loving and appreciating yourself. Not to mention knowing about yourself boosts your self-esteem and confidence because it shows you that you are a capable adult. As you begin to learn about yourself through the obstacles you face, you learn where your strengths lie and gain confidence, allowing you to tackle obstacles more efficiently in the future. They help you grow. Another major benefit of obstacles is that they help you grow. The only time you should grow stagnant is after death. The moment you stop growing is the moment you stop truly living your life. Obstacles ensure that you are continually becoming the best version of yourself. That's because obstacles force you to reflect upon yourself, your weaknesses, your strengths, and the world around you. During this reflection process, you can better yourself both on a conscious and subconscious level. After the reflection, 
you become more capable at overcoming obstacles, but you'll also likely experience an increase in self-compassion, empathy, and a number of other qualities associated with strong and capable people. They help you relate to others. Obstacles can also help you improve your relationships. The most meaningful relationships are built on empathy, compassion, and understanding. As you face obstacles, you become better at relating to others because you understand various hardships of life. These experiences can help you relate to others who have gone through similar experiences as well. Having shared experiences and obstacles with a person will boost your connection, trust, and overall relationship. Final thoughts. Once again, obstacles certainly are challenging, but they're not really a bad thing. They teach you about yourself and give you opportunities to grow, helping to boost your self-esteem and self-love. At the same time, obstacles help you to relate to others for more fulfilling relationships. Tap into your natural ability to overcome the odds. Whenever faced with obstacles and challenges, it may feel like the odds are stacked against us. Many people assume that if they don't have the natural skills, resources, or ability, they won't be able to overcome the odds. This is simply not true. On the contrary, all of us have everything we need to overcome the odds and beat our obstacles. By looking within yourself, you can overcome any obstacle in your way. In this tutorial, I'm going to tell you how to do just that. Let's take a look. 1. Don't ignore your emotions. The first way to tap into your natural ability to overcome the odds is by giving your emotions the recognition they deserve. Many people make the mistake of putting their emotions on the back burner. Though it's true you shouldn't get swept away by your emotions, ignoring them will only land you in more trouble than you started with. The only time when obstacles are insurmountable is when we let our emotions get the best of us. That only happens if you ignore them. Keep touching back to your emotions to tap into your natural ability to overcome the odds. Your emotions determine how to respond to a certain situation. If you understand and respect your emotions, you will be able to approach the obstacle in a much more understanding and rational way, helping you to overcome the odds. Two, have a growth mindset. In addition to paying attention to your emotions, have a growth mindset. A growth mindset tells you that you have the ability to improve on any skill or weakness. It is this mindset that allows you to improve yourself as a person. Everyone has the natural ability to have a growth mindset, but many people opt for a fixed mindset instead. Simply rewire the way you think about obstacles and your weaknesses in favor of a growth perspective. By making this simple challenge, you are much more likely to overcome the odds, all by looking within yourself. 3. Establish Goals An obstacle can seem impossible to defeat if it is large and daunting. Break that obstacle up into more manageable bites by establishing goals along the way. Establishing a goal gives you something to look forward to and makes the obstacle feel less daunting. Listen to your emotions and the facts of the obstacle to set the best goals. From there, actively pursue the goals. If you slip up or fail, call upon your growth mindset to keep going until you beat the odds. 4. Enjoy the process. The easiest and more important way to tap into your natural ability to beat the odds is to enjoy the process. Obstacles and hardships only feel hard because we don't enjoy the process. Obviously, it makes sense as to why we don't. After all, no one likes feeling inadequate, sad, or scared. Still, enjoying the process can be a large determiner of whether or not you overcome the odds. Start to overcome the odds by enjoying the process. You might not enjoy every aspect of it, but focusing on the positives and enjoying your growth will make it much more manageable. It will also keep you motivated and excited to continue your growth. Final thoughts. All that you need to overcome the odds can be found within yourself. Tap into your emotions, mindset, goals, and enjoyment to really master any obstacle that comes your way. Although these tips are easier said than done, 
trying to tap into these qualities will make a world of difference. What psychology says about obstacles? Believe it or not, most obstacles are in our heads. As a result, looking at psychology can help us learn how to overcome obstacles and live a better life. In this tutorial, I'm going to tell you the three biggest things that psychology says about obstacles. Let's get to it. Mindset matters. The most important thing that psychology teaches us about obstacles is that mindset matters. Countless of studies have shown that a person's mindset or perspective will make all the difference. Having a defeatist or fixed mindset is a recipe for disaster, while having an optimistic and growth mindset will help you overcome any obstacle that comes your way. The worst mindset that you can have when it comes to obstacles is viewing the world as against you or viewing yourself as a failure. Both of these mindsets are guaranteed to set you up for failure. This often incites a never-ending cycle of pessimistic mindsets. In contrast, one of the best mindsets to have is a growth mindset. A growth mindset helps you view any weakness or challenge as an opportunity to grow. You don't get fixated on the negative. Instead, you know that you have the ability to get better, eventually helping you overcome the obstacle. The Stop Method Another important thing that psychology teaches us is the STOP method. STOP is an acronym for STOP, take a step back, observe, and proceed. This method may seem incredibly basic, and it is, with good reason. Begin by stopping what you're doing whenever you're faced with an obstacle. Stopping gives you the opportunity to take a step back and observe your own emotions. Your emotions need to be recognized in any obstacle to give you a bit of guidance about yourself and the situation. Once you observe yourself, you can proceed mindfully. Mindful continuation means that you continue to touch back on your emotions and reflect on the process. This gives you the opportunity to continue to develop yourself throughout the entire obstacle. During the stop method, it is helpful to think about what advice you would give someone else if they were in your shoes. As humans, we're often much more critical and pessimistic of ourselves. By thinking about what advice you would give someone else, you take a much more unbiased perspective on your own situation. We can become more resilient. Finally, the third thing that I'm going to talk about that psychology teaches us is that we can become more resilient. What does this mean? Well, the fact that we can become more resilient tells us that we can become more capable at overcoming obstacles. The more obstacles we face, the better we will be at facing them. That's because we learn crucial facts about ourselves, the reality of the world, and overcoming obstacles with every challenge that faces us. As a result, we continue to grow so that we become better and better obstacle beaters. At this point, this fact of psychology should be ringing a bell. Doesn't it sound like what the growth mindset teaches us? It does. The fact that we can become more resilient shows exactly how the growth mindset works in life. So have a growth mindset because it is realistic to our psychology. We can become more resilient as time goes on. Final thoughts. All in all, psychology teaches us that we really shouldn't be that scared of obstacles. Instead, psychology shows us that mindset matters, the STOP method works, and we can become more resilient. Together, these three teachings can help us overcome any challenge that comes our way. What to do when obstacles seem like too much? Coming out of 2020, you probably know what it's like to feel overwhelmed by the sheer size or amount of obstacles on your plate. Although obstacles are necessary to help you grow, they certainly can be challenging, leading you to feel inadequate, distraught, and overwhelmed. Luckily, there are some things you can do to help manage the obstacles in front of you. In this tutorial, I'm going to tell you three things to do when obstacles seem like too much. Let's get started. 1. Take a deep breath. Whenever you begin to feel overwhelmed by obstacles, your body will likely show some physical signs. For example, your chest may become tight, 
breathing become more rapid, and bodies start to shake. Although these physical signs are not in and of themselves dangerous, they can pose health risks on down the line, and they aren't comfortable in the moment. Instead of dwelling on the obstacles you feel overwhelmed by, simply take a deep breath. Take a couple deep breaths if you need to. Simply breathe in and out to relax your body and give it some much needed oxygen. Breathing deeply will lessen the feelings of anxiety that come with feeling overwhelmed by your obstacles. Breathing deeply is also just good for your overall well-being. Aim to make your exhale longer than inhale for optimal results. Two, focus on what you can control. Whenever people feel overwhelmed by their obstacles, it is likely because they feel out of control with their life. As humans, we want to control everything. Obstacles remind us that we simply are not as in control of our lives as we would like to be. If this is why you feel overwhelmed by your obstacles, focus on something you can control instead. This may include your water intake, the food you put in your body, how you present yourself, reading a book, or anything else you have control over. Focusing on what you can control will take away the immediate signs of anxiety associated with obstacles. It may also boost your confidence, sense of self-love, and willingness to invest in your own life. Three, look at the positives. Finally, the last way to help manage feelings of stress from your obstacles is to look at the positives. No matter how bleak the obstacle or situation may be, there's always a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel. Focus on the positives to relax your mind. One positive of any obstacle is that it challenges you to become a better person. If you can't think of any other positive of your situation, fall back on this one. The obstacle is turning you into a stronger and more capable person. Chances are, however, there are other benefits as well. For example, if you got laid off at work, you can think that you now have more time to focus on your personal interests and hobbies. Though this won't take away the sting of getting laid off, it will make the sting slightly more tolerable. Whenever you look at the positives, you aren't just rejecting the bad. Instead, you have a much more realistic and adult view of the situation, which involves both positives and negatives. Final thoughts. Next time you feel overwhelmed by your obstacles, Take a deep breath. Focus on what you can control or look at the positives. Better yet, try a combination of all three techniques to help you calm yourself down and approach the obstacles more rationally once again. Why the most successful people are masters at overcoming obstacles. Have you ever looked around and wondered why some successful people are simply so lucky? It seems like everything in their life has gotten handed to them, allowing them to be the picture of success. Though it's easy to think this way, it's faulty. Successful people find themselves in opportune situations because they are masters at overcoming obstacles. One's ability to tackle obstacles head-on helps them improve themselves and get in a better space in life. So successful people are successful because they are masters at overcoming obstacles. In this tutorial, I'm going to tell you about why successful people are obstacle masters. The answer is actually quite simple. Mindset is key. Obstacles are inevitable and they help us grow. Let's take a look. Mindset is key. The number one reason why successful people are masters at overcoming obstacles is because their mindset is key. Your mindset affects everything in your life. From your relationships to work, your mindset and perspective determine your outcomes and situations to a large degree. Successful people know mindset is key, thus, they tailor their mindset towards success. In other words, they don't see themselves as defined by their obstacles. If they don't see themselves defined by the obstacles, then what is their mindset? The next two points will tell you just that. Obstacles are inevitable. Nothing in this life is guaranteed except death and taxes and obstacles. No matter who you are, where you live, or where you go, obstacles are an inevitable fact of life. 
you can't run from them, no matter how hard you try. Successful people incorporate this fact into daily mindset. Instead of dwelling on the obstacle or feeling sorry for themselves, they see that an obstacle is a necessary part of life that they must tackle head on. In contrast, people who don't view obstacles as inevitable tend to feel overwhelmed and upset by the obstacle. This distracts them from getting any work done. Therefore, they don't become successful. By keeping the fact that obstacles are inevitable in their mindset, successful people are ready whenever obstacles come their way. This allows them to face them head on and overcome the situation. They help us grow. In addition to having an inevitable view of obstacles, they also view obstacles in a more positive light. Successful people view obstacles as an opportunity for growth. This keeps them on their toes and excited about obstacles, even though they are hard. People who fail to succeed often do so because they have a defeatist attitude about obstacles. Whenever one thing goes wrong, they get overwhelmed and give up. As a result, they never experience success and it is their own fault. More so, viewing obstacles as a chance for growth is classified as a growth mindset. A growth mindset is one of the biggest predictors for a person's ability to become successful. It is true that this mindset helps successful people master obstacles to land themselves in a more opportune place in life. Viewing obstacles as an opportunity for growth is the only way that you can become successful. Successful people know this to be true and incorporate it into their mindset, allowing them to be masters of overcoming obstacles. Final Thoughts All in all, the most successful people are masters at overcoming obstacles because they know that they are inevitable and that they are opportunities for growth. This mindset about obstacles is actually what helps them to become successful. In other words, your mindset about obstacles both helps you overcome them and achieve success in your life.